everybody, Chomp the Good Dog, and we've got Zeller. Zeller. Uh, sorry, that's a hard name for me. I don't think I've ever heard a dog named Zeller before. Zeller is Henry's brother. And uh, so Zeller's here for a uh, wee board and train as well. Zeller's a very nervous, insecure, fearful guy. We've had no interactions. Like, he's not like flying away from me. He's not up on the couch. He's not under table. So he's not like at the top, top, top end of like, oh my God, the most fearful dog in the world. But like, he's a very, very insecure, very nervous, very concerned, worried dog, and definitely in the fearful category. But he's not, I'd, say, I'd give him on a scale of zero to 10, I'd say he's probably like a six or a seven. So knowing that we could do our regular program, we could do our regular leash and prong and start introducing him to plays and things like that. But what I like to do with guys like this is start off, he's just on a, on a um, he's actually on a TGD ultimate collar and um, an e-collar. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start doing just tiny little recalls back to me, tiny little recalls back to me. And what I wanna do is do what I've talked about over and over and over again with you guys, which is the reverse perception game. So the perception is like, if I try to get really close and like cuddly with him right now, he's going to be very uncomfortable being away from me is more comfortable. What I want to do is flip that. I want to reverse it. I want to get him to think that being away from me is less comfortable, being close to me, more comfortable. So what I'm hoping is he'll continue as he's done prior with me about being like a little worried so I can actually show you how I work through that and how I get a dog to stop being so concerned about me and begin the very beginning process of like, how do I put it? You can say bonding, but it's actually more about, well, he's pulling hard. Um, it's more about removing the, the layers of fear that are so intense that you can't teach the dog. You have to have some kind of foundational space mindset wise with the dog where they're calm enough, not so overwhelmed, not so freaked out that you can actually teach them more complex things and um, so for me, I prefer to do low level e-collar recalls to be able to get rid of that kind of layer of extra tension and anxiety, which I know is gonna work against other teaching, other learnings, other moving forwards. How do you like that or bad English? Um, okay, so you can see like I'm pulling pretty hard. He's just kind of like doing his thing. He's just, if you can see like, like can you pan down and look at him, you see his body language. You can see he's fully pushing forward. Okay, now he's like giving up with that. So I'm gonna start very, very low. I'm gonna be on the continuous button. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna do it like when its nose is super engaged. So I'm just gonna kind of move him around. And he's actually better, he got dropped off yesterday. He's a little better right now. He doesn't look quite as like overwhelmed, which is great. But still we've got this kind of like just moving away to the end of the leash, trying to get away. So let me start doing this process, which is going to be, not that, it's gonna be on the button, dialing up a little bit, guidance, guidance, good. Now, we're gonna just do this over and over and over again. You've seen him just trying to kind of like get away from me. I'm at four, pressure on, guidance, good, there you go. Now he's going that direction, pressure on, guidance, dialing up, dialing up, good. So just so you guys know, when I say good, I'm off the button, right? So I'm saying, Pressure on means I'm pressing and holding the button. God, he's really like, seems like I'm straining here. Um, pressing and holding when I say pressure on, and I thought he was gonna pee for sure. Uh, <laughs> it's like, dear God, no, <laughs> bite me or anything, just don't, don't pee. So, so pressure on means the butt, I'm on the button continuous. Dialing up means I'm holding the button and rolling up slowly to increase the pressure. 
Guidance means I'm guiding the dog with the leash and you can notice my body language also is guiding him in as well. And then when you hear me say good, you know that I'm off the button, okay? So hopefully that gives you a bit of the, of the, the lay of the land, if you will. So I'm gonna dial down four, pressure on, good. Pressure on, guidance, good. Good, there you go. Already, like nicer, hanging out. Two or three reps, all of a sudden the dog who was like, I don't care about you. So like, you can do this with fearful dogs, insecure dogs, but you can also do this with dogs that are just completely tuned out, who don't care give a rat's behind about who you are and would just rather sniff everything else. This is how you can start to get a dog to actually think about you being more relevant and actually prioritizing you rather than just kind of ignoring you. So pressure on, good, good. I'm gonna change directions, good. Pressure on, guidance, change directions, pressure on. Now, what you see me doing is moving around. We don't have a lot of space here, but my goal is, the whole goal is to win the game. I'm sorry, the whole goal is to show him how to win the game, which is you only turn the pressure off by coming into me. And right now what he's doing is kind of playing this ring, ring around the rosy thing. I know you're pulling like the, like the Dickens. So he's doing this ring around the rosy thing, trying to kind of move away, move away. So that's why you keep seeing me moving the opposite direction. What I want to try and teach him is that the only way you turn this pressure off is by instead of shearing off away from me, you actually come into me. In order for that to happen, I need to keep getting behind him pressure on and then slowly teaching him through patterning that, oh, every time I come in towards Sean, pressure goes away. Pressure goes away, pressure goes away. Every time I shear off, pressure goes back on and then Sean moves position. So that's kind of the game we're playing. Pressure on, dialing up, dialing up, dialing up, dialing up. Good, there you go. So as soon as I said good, I was off the button. We went from four to seven. We got some some noisemakers outside. Isn't it? Is it the weekend? No, it's Monday. It's New Orleans. Doesn't matter. It's Monday. So I'm gonna let him do his thing. Pressure on, dialing up, dialing up. Good. There you go. Very nice. Now you see this wariness, like. He's, he's a little unsure right here, right? So let me see if I can clean this up. Pressure on. Guidance, dialing up. Dialing up. Dialing up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay right here, dial back down. Pressure on. Dialing up. You can see his resistance. Dialing up. Guidance, dialing up. Dialing up. Okay, so this is too much. So that went to 10, but it's no big deal. But that's just, I'm having to use too much pressure here with my leash, which I don't want to do. So that tells me, okay, we're gonna, we need to change strategies. So I'm gonna let him move around. Oftentimes kneeling down like that helps the dog come into you and feel more comfortable. But you really see this guy, he's really into kind of just like this hard pulling. So pressure on, dialing up. Guidance. Good. So why didn't I say good initially? Because he turned, but then he went down to sniffing. So that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for him to actually come into me. Now I'm gonna start moving a little quicker so we don't run out of time here. Pressure on, changing directions. Good, there you go. Now that's what I'm looking for. What he just learned right there was probably his best version of the lesson, which is that the only way you win this game and turn the pressure off is by coming into me, not shearing off. So now let's rock and roll. Come on, buddy. Pressure on, dialing up, dialing up, changing directions, dialing up. Guidance, off the button, dialing down, dialing back up. Nope, there you go. So you can see he wants to scratch 
because it's on continuous. So back on the button, dialing up, dialing up, dialing up, change directions on the pressure, dialing up, good. Now, still worried about this last distance. I'm gonna step back, pressure on. You see, it keeps wanting to go the other direction, so I go the opposite, dialing up, dialing up. There you go. Actually, that last time I said dialing up, good. Last time I said dialing up, I was actually not dialing up, I was just back on the button. Sometimes it's hard to uh, say exactly what you're doing while you're doing it. So just so you guys don't think I was like dialing up right then, that was back on the button and we were at seven or eight. So let's just keep watching and see how this develops. Let me go that way, pressure on, dialing up, dialing up, guidance, dialing up, motion from me to help him out, change of direction, pressure on, that was six, pressure on, guidance, dialing up a little bit, Good, that's seven. So we're basically working between five, seven to like 10, somewhere around there. It's pretty much our, our average. Um, five and six tend to be kind of like good if he's not sniffing too hard. Seven, eight, nine, help him kind of really dial in. So here we go again. Guidance, good. Now he's just blowing me off, pressure on. Dialing up, dialing up, guidance. So when he gets locked like that, I have two choices. I can roll up higher, add more pressure here, add more pressure here, or I can dial back down, move a little bit, back on the button. So he's not locked into that kind of whatever he was locked into. Pressure on, pressure on. There you go. Pressure on. There you go. And it might look like we're doing a whole bunch of like ring around the rosy and circus stuff, but if we had a little more space, it would be easier. And if we didn't have a room that was heavily coated in dog smells, you'd see a lot less of his nose being planted on the ground most likely. But it just is what it is. And I'll actually take the trade off of having less majorly loud external noises and have some more internal distractions with um, with the smells. So I'll just pull his nose out of there. Pressure on. Good. There you go. Loose leash. And if you've noticed, like, this hasn't been perfect. There's been times where I've, like, I've experimented a little bit, I've rolled up, I've added a little more leash pressure, I've tried to see will that make it work for him, which is typically not what I like to do. I like to use more e-collar pressure and less leash pressure, but because he was so like strong and like sniffing, I was trying to kind of see if like, well, maybe a little bit more of this and a little bit more of this, we might be able to break him through. But then I opted to go back to just moving my body around and finding some other positions and just being more creative about it. So let's come, let's see if we can just kind of dial this in. He's already looking more comfortable. Pressure on. There you go. Good, 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 good. Pressure on, pressure on before he gets his nose in there. Good, there you go. Not so bad. Now I'm gonna take a step back. Dial back down to five. Pressure on. Good. Nice. Now, could you do this stuff with treats? Of course you could. But when you have a truly nervous, insecure, fearful dog, they're not gonna take any food from you. And in fact, you can create a situation where they're far less comfortable with you because what they end up feeling is this whole kind of like this whole game you're playing with them as far as like, 
well, come on in for the food, come on in for the food. And they're like, I want the food, I want the food, but I don't want to get close to you. And so they have this weird conflict of I want it, I want it. But then I, I really feel like a lot of times it creates mistrust rather than creating trust. So for me, this works better. So pressure on. Change your directions, pressure on, dialing up, dialing up. Good, beat you to it that time, huh? Good, 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 good. There we go. There you go, much better, much better. What do you think? Come. Good. So he's gonna move past me, come. Good. So I just put a word on it. Come. Good. There you go. Nice. I'm at five. Come. Good. Yeah. Good. And typically, I do, whew, sorry, this standing up and it gives me a, it's giving me, giving me lightheaded. Typically, I add the word whatever command I'm using earlier in the sequence or right off the bat, like if I'm doing recall and things like that, but only with, if you watch my videos, you'll hear this is consistent, only if I know that I'm going to get 99.999% accuracy of what I'm looking for. And with this guy, because he's been shearing off and doing all this stuff, I'm not going to say come because he's been doing anything but that. If I had him on leash and prong and we were doing tiny little recalls from place to place and I'd already conditioned him with that stuff, maybe I would do it like that because God, you've got one strong nose. Maybe I would do it like that because I would know I'm going to get this recall. But with this situation, we've had anything but like a really, really nice precise recall or anything even in the ballpark for quite some time. So I didn't add the word hum until he started giving me what looked to be a pretty decent recall. So that's when I make the exception of when I'll add the word early and when I'll add the word early and when I won't. Come, dialing up, come. So you see me moving, come. There you go. Good. Good. There you go. There's five. Come. Good. Not so bad. Come. Good. Very nice. So you see how, so I wanted to check him by doing this. This was less about praise and I wanted to see like, how does he feel? still super nervous about me like touching him. So we won't do that. Come, dialing up, dialing up, come. Change your directions. Good, there you go. Now I wanna get him to come all the way into me. Let's see if I can make it happen. Dialing down to six, come. Dialing up, come, come, good. So that's pretty close, that's nice. And it causes him to actually engage with me, sniffs, all that stuff. That, that took us from five to seven. Now I'm back down to five. Watch out, bud. Now I can do some things where, so I did the recalls. Now I can do some things where I just do some turns with him and see if that helps. And if it doesn't, then we'll go back to recalls. But let's just try it. Let's go. Good. I'm at five. No. Let's go. Let's go. Good. I'll dial up a little bit. Let's go. Six. Good. No. Let's go. Dialing up. There you go. Now I'm at eight. Dialing down. Let's go. We're at seven. Let's go. Dialing up. Let's go. 
Good. Do a couple more reps of this. Let's go. Now let's go is different than recall because I'm actually just having a move with me rather than come to me. Let's go. Dialing up. Let's go. Let's go. He's a pretty like stubborn guy when he wants to do his thing. Okay, cool. So we did a few of those turns. They might have helped a little bit. Now I'm going to go back to recalls. I'm at six. Come. Good. Good. Nice. So now we see that possibly using the combination of the two different commands or the two different techniques of recall of using recall, <laughs> sorry, dog noises, so many tap dancing, using recall at low levels, but then also using turns uh, with let's go at low levels are yielding some nice benefits. So I'm gonna go back, and this is something I wanna really hammer home with you guys in, in the training world, trainers or owners, try things, try it, see what you get. If it works, if it helps, keep doing of it. Keep doing it. If, if it starts to work against you, jettison it and go with something else. So here we go with a few more turns. Let's go. Dialing up a little bit. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Dialing up. Let's go. There you go. That was 10. Let me keep them on this side. Dialing down. Let's go. Good. And when I do it really right, let's go. You'll notice the leash is pretty fluid and relaxed. Little bit of guidance. Let's go. There you go. That's a better one. I did one back there that was a little herky-jerky. Nope. And then that nose. But it should be. Look. No. Let's go. I don't know what's going on. I think the dogs get fed their raw food down here, don't they? Maybe what? Get fed their raw food down here. Yeah. yeah. So no wonder. I think we should stop doing that. Let's go. So I'm going to do a couple more reps of this and then back to recall to wrap it up. Let's go. Good. One more time. I'm at six. I'm going to dial up a little bit. Let's go. Good. So you see he's kind of just like working with me. So that puts him into a different frame of mind. Let's go. Good. Now I'm going to finish off with a few recalls and then we'll see what we end up with, as far as you can go all the way back to the beginning of the video, what do you look like compared to, I don't know, what is this? How long is this like total? So what I want you guys to do is however long this video ends up being, it won't be any longer than 30 minutes, but you can go back to the very beginning, see what the dog looked like, and then you can see what what's transpired in his behavior and how he interacts with me in less than 30 minutes. So pretty cool stuff already what we're seeing rather than you don't see any more of that pulling out and like trying to get to one spot just kind of hanging with me so come come that's a boy good 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 come good come still gets a little bit concerned about that right so when i say good and do all this he gets a little mm, that's a little much so i should probably take my enthusiasm down even though i'm trying to encourage him and make him feel better always 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 say the same thing it's like make sure your praise or your excitement or your affection or your rewards make sure they help and don't hinder at this point that kind of like a little bit more exuberant stuff seems to work against what i want so i'm going to try going for a more neutral thing Come. Good. There you go. Come. Good. I'm going to come up here. Come. Dialing up. Come. Nope. Nope. Come. Dialing up. Come. So he gets the itchies around like 12, 13. So <laughs> let him out of there. Come on, let's go. Dialing back down. What? Whoops. Get that over your head. Come. Come on. Don't you bite that leash. Come. Good. There you go. Very nice. Come. 
come. Good, very nice. All right, now let's take them to the middle. Nope, come. Good. So I'm already getting better control over all of that, like diving into the fireplace to sniff the toys or diving towards the corner of the carpets or the couch. We haven't seen much of that. So let's see. I know we've only got a couple minutes left. Let's see what we get in the last few minutes. And this isn't supposed to be a finished product. This isn't supposed to be the dog is done. This isn't supposed to be wow, you waved your magic wand and the dog is no longer fearful. That's not what this is about. This is about the first baby step towards getting rid of one of those layers of anxiety and fear to where the dog feels more comfortable working with you. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Come. Come. There you go. Good. Good. Come. There you go. Nice. Very nice. All right. Come. Dialing up. Come. Good. Good. All right. Very nice. I'm at six. Come. Come. So even then, like, he went towards the, uh, the seat where he's done a lot of sniffing and, like, really been intense about it. And what you're seeing is that already the e-collar work is starting to break that pattern of like, I can just ignore you. I can just sniff this. There's really no consequence for it. So I might as well do it because I enjoy it. And now what you're seeing is he's like, well, that's interesting, but I should probably pay attention to you. That's interesting. I should probably pay attention to you. And you're starting to see it in a more general kind of sense. Let's go. Come on, buddy. Come. Come. Dialing up. Come. There you go. Still worried about that last like foot and a half. So I'm going to back up. Come. Good. Yeah, there's noises out there. I get it. Let's go. Come on. Even if we're inside here in NOLA, there's always something. So nose is buried. Come. Dialing up. Come. Good. There you go. All right. Now. Bring him over here. Come. So distracted by the camera. That makes sense because he's a nervous Nelly. What? Let's go. Come. Dialing up. Come. Good. So loose leash, not like jumping out to like get into all this stuff anymore more comfortable, and like I said, first step, not a fixed step, not a magic wand, nothing like, th the only magic in this is that it actually works and that it helps the dog move another uh, step closer and removes a layer of problem or um, something that's obscuring or, or uh, is a barrier to progress. So a couple more just for the heck of it because we got a minute and then we'll wrap. Come. Dialing up, come, good. Come, good, very nice. All right, I think we'll leave it right there. That's a pretty good wrap. Now I've become the sniffy thing, right? Rather than the couches and the chairs and things like that. So this just goes to show you, we've been between like six, highest I think we were at was like 14. That was too much for him, not pain wise, but that was too much for him where he was like just getting tickly with it. So we backed off of that. But what you got to see is just me do a little bit of like real time problem solving. Um, no magic, no perfection, just trying things, things that I know work, and then kind of working with them with the dog. So that is low level recall, um, also low level um, kind of turns. I say, let's go. You can use whatever word you want, but the difference between the walking and the turns are that the dog is moving with you and you're using the e-collar as kind of uh, just a, a leash to give guidance without having to manhandle the dog to move with you, which is a very different psychological um, uh, uh, psychological impact or um, way that it affects the dog. And then doing the low level recall is also a different psychological effect and impact 
uh, on the dog as far as like getting them to feel different about interacting and working with you. So I hope that gives you some ideas of, of how you can work with a dog that's nervous, insecure, fearful, and get them over the hump and remove a layer and get them started to be able to do more work where they're not so worried, not so freaked out, and not so tuned out. So I'll gladly take this loose leash. She hasn't moved. And, um, you know, and like I said, you don't have to be perfect with it. You just have to be smart, tuned in, see what's working, try things, get rid of the things that don't work, try the try some other things oh, that worked, jettison the things that don't, try keep doing the things that do, and um, and don't get hung up on being perfect with the stuff, and don't get hung up on that it has to all happen in one session, and uh, hopefully that's helpful, guys. All right, this is Zeller, Zeller, and uh, he did pretty good for his first session.